my first ever pitch was in English, which is not my first language. It was in San Francisco and it was at the Sequoia Capital headquarters with Jason Calacanis, the legendary investor from Silicon Valley. Because you know, sales brings you customers. Support keeps your customers. There's one pro tip I, I tell every single people who are looking for, you know, their employees, people to, to work with them. Just add a video of yourself talking about this job. Your AI assistant would see in the usage of your, you know, customer's account, they would say they are, there is a 60% probability they're, they're not gonna, you know, extend the, uh, the deal we, we have with them. Call them. This is AI I need right now. Not the AI that, you know, does, re replaces your basic skills, like, you know, writing an email. Hello and welcome uh, to another episode of uh, Digital Executives Hub. This is, uh, this is the place uh, where, where I um, interview people that are changing uh, the world, people that are using technology to change the world. And uh, I always say that, but I'm always excited to have a new guest on. Uh, and today it's Maciej. Hi, and thanks for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it is a pleasure. There, there are two things that fascinate me in this world. Uh, data is the first one, but then uh, understanding of user experience uh, and user interface is, is fascinating to me because, you know, you can pretty much um, take any product and, and make it terrible to use or you can or you can make it easy to use. And then the adoption of that of that uh, you know, product or, or, or service could could change dramatically just because you understand how people interact with it. And you are representing <laughs> the other thing that I like, which is uh, user interface and user experience. And, and that knowledge is, is fascinating to me because if you understand that, that means that you understand people as well. That's why I'm super excited you know, to have you on uh, today. But <laughs> for people that don't know what you do on a regular basis, uh, can you share just a couple of sentences, just to describe what you do and uh, how are you changing our world with technology? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, thanks again for the great intro. Uh, so I'm Mac and what I do is I run a company called I1. I1 helps you uh, talk to your customers in various ways. and. You know, in the past, I, I was a designer and I created a company uh, that uh, also, you know, developed a lot of software for in investment companies. So my background is quite vast, but right now I focus on, you know, interactions between companies and, and their customers. Yeah, that's... Um... <laughs> That's also uh, that's also great. I haven't mentioned that at the beginning, but that, that's just amazing because uh, I, I do work in sales or I help you know sales departments, and this is the one thing that that I wish we had more of, and this is interaction with your uh, customer. So the more you interact with your customer, the easier the process is. You know, the better you can actually service your your your, your client. So. This is another thing that, that fascinates me. So I guess we're just going to have a lot of uh, super interesting things uh, to talk about today. But Yeah, and it costs you zero money. Like, it's just your aptitude. Really? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll talk about that. If the, if this... Uh, if, okay, I, I, I was going for another question, but you just said something that I have to comment on, right? What do you mean it, it, it costs you zero money? Like, then if, if it's free, why a lot of companies... Is doing it you know it's it's all in your mindset think think of this way uh think uh like a you know restaurant owner you can run your restaurant only by spending your time in the kitchen mm -hmm. 
but the best chef would do the you know walk around ask the ask the guests check the table if everything works and you know people say give me feedback i need feedback what's the feedback do we have numbers no just take the phone talk to your customers what's up what your day looks like it sounds simple <laughs> still you know, yeah, other it's people very don't simple. do it yeah yeah just you know talking to your customers especially uh you know doing something like once per a month for a quarter it depends on on your business just asking how you're doing it will bring you probably some kind of a new business ideas uh, a better relations uh and it will lower your churn because you know they are becoming closer yeah. to you so was that the motivation for you to start i1 to enable no. that communication <laughs> No, okay. it was, you know, it, it was totally yeah, opposite. I... Uh, we created I1 because we were pissed off with uh, the software we, we could uh, use. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think it was 2020 when the idea sparkled. Yeah, because it was COVID uh -huh. time. We wanted to, you know, um, invite our customers for meetings and run meetings online with them without, you know, interactions, integrations, like, sure, I could have used Calendly and Zoom, but I want something, I wanted something different. Like I want to, you know, send a beautiful invitation for my customer so they can pick their time when they are going to meet with us. Uh, everything was branded with my company. Everything was super simple to connect. You, there was no app needed. You, no login, no, you know, entering your email. Just cutting the fluff. And so that's how I1 was created. And uh, for those who don't know, we, we, we combine a couple of things in, in one simple product, like a live chat when you, when you can type to your customers, the video calls with your own branding and meeting automation. Soon there's gonna be a beautiful set of AI powered features uh, just to help you talk to your customers. It's it's a very simple idea uh, and and quite a complicated execution actually. Okay, I'm I'm already loving this because I had a different plan for this conversation, but but we we are finding ways to to discuss. We can get back to the script <laughs> no if you want. Script. I never never Is had or any... never used one. I'm. Uh, I'm here to have a conversation, not to follow a script. But but I just had different different idea. But it's it's all good. Like uh, I think yeah. getting getting to know you is the part of this uh, of this show basically. So you kind of you know told us uh, why you do certain things and and you know that the that that you are you know somebody that was looking for a solution that wasn't didn't didn't really exist, right? And, and now yeah, you know probably it. It, it 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 was there. But first, it wasn't affordable. I couldn't find it. It's, it's, it, and you know, there's some kind of a sheer joy of creating stuff. For creative people, you, sometimes you just have to yeah. do it. Like, forget about why and all the, um, I don't know, market research. Forget what other people do. Forget what other people say to you. Just, do what you want is, uh -huh. you know, for, for startups, uh, what you do is kind of your hobby. It's your passion. Everybody's jealous now. Everybody's jealous now because not, 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 not everybody can do what, what you're describing, but I wish more, more people could, can, we would have more cool stuff around, you know, I said sometimes yeah. or mostly, I don't remember, but yeah, it, it happens and it's, Without it, you you would you know you would lose your uh, confidence, and you wouldn't perceive there. You, you could you you would just die <laughs> without this. No, it's it's. Uh, I talk to a lot of people on daily basis, and then there are creative people that, if creative people cannot create, they will die, <laughs> or they will be super unhappy. And 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 I think you are one of the one of those creative people. That's why. You know, creating for you is just something different than than for most people. But I want to get back to how it all started. 
and then and I, I need a little uh, introduction to how did you start I1, but also um, was there anything before I1? I don't I, I I don't I don't know if there was, but I'm I'm thinking there was because creating I1 you know requires understanding technology, some kind of background. So how the whole story yeah, started? Sure. So yeah. uh, so my story is quite simple uh i started designing as a as a freelancer and then my customers they wanted to do basic software stuff like websites etc a couple years forward uh we were creating very complicated investment platforms with my team and this that was my you know my daily daily business and we used to, you know, do a research projects. Like in the past year, we are working on a, on a, using a chat GPT and other AI stuff. In the past, we were doing like a hackathons, internal hackathons. Like let's do something cool just to, you know, do something cool because it's, it's a great time together. It bonds your team extremely well. So we created like, um, like an app mobile app that blocked uh, unwanted calls and we had to shut it shut it down because of legal issues but during the that 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 app's lifetime we blocked like six or seven million millions unwanted robocalls so i should me and other people should should thank you i guess for not picking up robocalls right i received 200 letters from people who had to you know, search for me in the, in the uh, internet just to say, where's the app? I want it back. I will pay you for this because we, you know, we released it pro uh, bono. Yeah. It was totally for free and there was no catch, like no catch, but sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, dead so now. Have you ever thought of doing this commercially? Cause you did it just because you wanted to, uh, but I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of complaints from the companies that actually cold calling people. Uh, so have you ever thought of doing this uh, commercially and you're actually charging for it or you're just... Yeah, we, we thought about it and there were some issues we, you know, the first thing is what kind of problem do you solve? And here it was a perfect match. We were blocking the unwanted calls. Mm -hmm. And, but for, from the other side is how you're going to survive. It means how you're going to make mm -hmm. money, yeah. right? So... You know, I, I was funding this from my pocket, yeah. like paying for, for software developers, for the servers, etc. For even we had a, we had a person working full time and, and, and she was checking all the numbers, you know, like every single number per, per 30, 28 <laughs> seconds. Yep. If, if, if it's a valid number or not. So now we can we could do it with AI. It, it's sure. very simple today. So do you, do you know how many users you get at 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 the, at the highest point? Uh, almost half a million. So just imagine that you did the most amazing proof of concept ever. <laughs> you you tested the product. The product you know seemed to be working. Half a million people were using it. It's unbelievable. You know, yeah, that's correct. I still think that would be a, a good model. Like business model for yeah, the future. You know, I don't know. Probably we're gonna we, we could launch it again, but this time we would forget about developing a, an Android version because Android phones I mean, first. We have, we, have, we, have, we have Android users that will listen to it. So yeah, so screw Android because there are several hundred Android phones in the market today, and developing for them means you have to have like. A, a huge suitcase of phones yeah. and so and there's another thing um you know the the android is not a very clear and uh, and cl i mean it's not a clean system clean ecosystem mm -hmm. you've got all these add-ons from the manufacturers mm -hmm. so they are doing this stuff and they are blocking the robocalls quite good mm -hmm. right now Four or five years ago, when we were running this app, 
it was totally a different situation. But for iPhones and iOS, still, there is a huge uh, uncovered gap. And right now, iOS in, in Europe, you know, it's about one fourth of the phones available yeah, in the market. I, I do understand, but I also understand that Apple needs Android, right? They, they kind of need each other. There's, there's, there, there has to be more than one uh, brand on the market. But I understand that it's just, you know, easier for you to work. work. Yeah, every hero needs a villain and it works for both sides, you know. You know, God needs Satan and et cetera. Yes, like, water that's needs why fire. we have both it's, brands. It's, this dualism in the world is incredible. That, that's it. So we we have we have to kind of work with both because if we lose one, the other one is going to take over, which I don't really want. So we understand your background. And now, you know, tell us about the startup. Tell us about I1. Tell us about what were you thinking. Because... Um, uh, we understand that you, you you had a dev shop and then at some point you you wanted you know we had we, we had more you know interesting projects because and and i one was like uh guys we're doing this crazy stuff for you know just for fun or to check mm -hmm. the idea um how about you know turning our company which is a service uh -huh. company when you're doing a dev shop you're a service company into a product uh -huh. company because when you have your own product your company is uh -huh. the product so you know it's very rewarding and we wanted to go that way okay but but what, like were you thinking yeah it's easier to scale were you thinking uh it's easier to sell you know basically if you're selling um hypothetically it's it's, it's easier but if you're really, really good at what you used to do, then maybe not. But the motivation was, you know, because I understand, I understand that for me it would be easier, you know, to run a product company than a service company, way easier. But this is something that you were thinking, or this is just something that you really, really wanted to do, and and you found out then that this is something that that you you know are going to want to grow and and develop. You know, my idea was. Uh... You know, it sounds basic, but I said, you know, the worst thing can could happen. Uh, it's us being the only customer. <laughs> you know, it's still not that yeah. bad. Yeah. So, so yeah, just we just started, and and you know, the I one had like a lot of different technology uh, predecessors. Um, and, and we decided we just want to focus on, you know, com companies talking to their customers on sales and support. Where's the, you know, contact point of, of these two groups. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing that interests me about you is the pro bono work. Like, why do you invest your own money in, in making things for, for other people, uh, for, for, for the benefit of course, but it's just it's not typical if, if more people do that the, the the world would be a better place what drives you what motivates you to 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 be you know to involve your time and your money in that kind of projects it's interesting because i'm not sure about the second part of your question <laughs> what well, really I elaborate, mean, I, have elaborate. To, I have to think about it yeah uh but but the first uh, first part is um when you think about efficiency of what you do, right? So you, you're never you're never at hundred mm -hmm. percent. Mm -hmm. Never, it doesn't mm -hmm. happen. If you think so, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And for example, if you have a consulting business, like you're a software like developer me? or you're a, you know tennis coach, you're selling your time, and and that's you know. That's the you know the uh, it's not scalable. That's the it's, sailing it's limited to to the to the amount of time that you have, right? Yeah. Yeah, and 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 when when you think about it, if you're running this kind of a you know pro bono project, because you know this robocall app wasn't the only one. <laughs> we we worked uh, with several dog shelters to help them out. Okay. 
not only to you know wire them money but to help them you know collect money from people uh so my take was it's very rewarding it gives you the energy you it gives you you know it was paying back in different time i mean in in maybe not financial uh way but it, it was really time sp great spend i i would do it again <laughs> if i could okay now i have to ask if, if that was something that you would do again was there any other projects that you did uh just because you wanted to and, and it was beneficial for others um uh, you know the question beneficial to others yeah we were working on you know some animals i mean helping animal stuff and and pro uh i mean I, pro ecological yeah. ideas but th there were smaller projects like we were mostly offering our services to people who otherwise couldn't afford it and it, it was for free but when it comes to product uh yeah we had we, we had more products but not pro bono they, they were hobby projects you know like i'm not sure if you know about it but my first ever pitch you know, when you run a startup or you're a, you're in a sales business, you're doing pitches. My first ever pitch was in English, mm -hmm. which is not my mm -hmm. first language. It was in San Francisco and it was at the Sequoia Capital headquarters with Jason Calacanis, the legendary investor from Silicon yeah. Valley. Uh, and the, the whole story how did I get there? It's, it's pretty funny, yeah. but it, it was an amazing experience, like what? super experience. And yeah, first of all, how, how did this happen? And, and secondly, what were you pitching? Uh, you know, we were pitching, uh, I can show it because I've got it here. So, let me say. so we created a start, a beacon mm -hmm. startup beacons were the, you know, small, um, uh, devices that helped you lo locate things mm -hmm. in the past like if you were going in front of a shop or, 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 or any mm -hmm. restaurant you could have received a message the idea was quite simple and it was a couple of years ago today we would use other technology but then we decided we we're going to do beacons uh -huh. and it was it was a totally hobby project like we started during a hackathon with mm -hmm. my team like let's do something cool oh guys they are beacons how about checking how it works and what can we do about it so a couple months later i am i hope it's gonna work so we created this small beacon and i've got my mic back looks like a diamond so, 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 is it yeah it, it, we called it Drill. jewel nice and so we created the first prototype of this device working with some engineers living in the countryside uh in, in a wooden house uh we created you know a, a huge press for the mm, for the Isn't case it? of this mm -hmm. device and <laughs> the total expenses for this project for this device let no let me guess let me guess seven million dollars <laughs> ten grand okay and, and and to you know speed tickets yeah. uh, i got but yeah it, it it was this level of being cheap but now people that have ideas they will be reaching out to you and they'll be like mac help us develop this idea for ten thousand dollars how did you is there any magic behind it like how how were you able to be so efficient making that jewel uh you know uh first thing is you have to start thinking uh like an engineer that's that has no resources for example you have to launch a rocket in the space what kind of materials you're gonna use sure everybody's gonna t gonna tell you use the strongest and the lightest possible but then you're gonna say yeah but for example the production process process won't be there i mean it would take too long or we there's no such supply of this raw materials in the world 
just you know i think it, it, it was a child of a passion uh, of of the team and we really you know this is a device that nobody's gonna see i mean a couple of people but we wanted to create it so beautiful that you want to you know touch it like what's this yeah and this is this is the part yeah, this is this is the user experience, user interface uh, background that you have because it's 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 actually really nice. You know, it's it's not just created to have a purpose; it's also created to be good to look at. <laughs> I think so. That's why that's why I admire because yeah, like if that was just a box that you showed us, you know, nobody would remember it. But if if I can look at it and it looks like uh, a diamond, it's called jewel and it has a purpose. The whole story is there. You know, this is pretty much the basics of marketing that you did for some reason. I don't know if you were aware of that or you just like to make uh, beautiful stuff. I, I I don't know. Do you know what's the reason for you? I think there was no other way, and... you know. Like, uh, I think that there's something in 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 design and i'm not talking about the external part mm -hmm. of design but for example when you're when you're looking at a really beautifully designed thing uh you you, you have this kind of sense how people who are working on it were thinking mm. you know that's why for example i'm really pissed off with with many japanese stuff okay you've got a very modern camera but to to download the software, you're still in the '90s. Thanks God they are not sending me a you know a mm -hmm. DVD disc. Yeah, make make, make makes perfect. Then, uh, I mean, I don't know why is that. I I don't I don't know because the the the, the cameras that they make are incredible, best on the market. But the experience of using it, you have to spend your time. Yeah. Right and. Then go to Apple, go and or check the how how Teslas are designed, how how seamless the experience is. You may not love Apple or any other American company, but the experience they is were, in the place. Yeah, because the the experience is on its own. It's marketing. Experience equals marketing. You know. So if people are loving using it, they cannot talk about it. And I think Steve Jobs and and Elon Musk, they know, they know mar they knew marketing better than uh, maybe not <laughs> maybe not Elon Musk because I think he knows technology better than marketing. But they both really understood marketing uh, principles and, and 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 they used it. So I want to get back to you know uh, our conversation and get back to the fact that you were able to do so many things. You you describe whatever projects that that, that you did, uh, they all seem to be successful. The question is, how do you find the right people to run those projects? I think the right people just, they, they stay with you. you. You get along with them. Sure. Okay. Because but he, how do you recruit them in the first place? Is there any like strategies that you have? Because it seems that, you know, creating this beacon and, and, then, and then creating an, an app and then, you know, the product. I won. It's the different things. I mean, how do you find the right people to do it? Is it just the skill that you have or can you somehow advise us how to do it? I had to think about th that answer, but there is a fun fact about my core team that no one from my core team, and they started working with me years mm -hmm. ago, uh, was even a bit of skill they, they had no skill when they started and now they are like super experts because it's it's not your skill skill is uh you can you can learn your skill but it's very hard to change your you know approach and how you think about solving problems what time do you wake up how how do you react to you know bad news in your company or in your life and that's that's how you stay with your company sure you cannot do it on scale it's very oh, hard yeah. to do oh, it on scale oh absolutely like every time i use something like every time i 
I use a service from a company that is pretty big. It's, it's, it's not great. It's not a good experience. Um, everybody wants to scale. Everybody wants to make money. That's why those companies scale. But the experience is disappearing. You know, it's, 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 it's not great. But, okay, so... And, you know, there's one thing about recruiting because we were running a, a small internal startup that, that was focused on recruiting. It was also our, you know, Another internal stuff. That, that, I, that you used to run. That's, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we, and that one, we had to kill the, that company because we, were, we, we ran out of mm -hmm. money. It was COVID. I said, guys, uh, we have no more money to, to burn and... We, we needed a, a runway of, uh, you know, six, eight months to complete the product. We, we, we even had the first customers, but we, uh, these days we, I said, let's focus on, on one project. And that, that was I one. And yeah, but what we were doing there, what was interesting because we focused on recruiting without using your resume because you know, from my perspective, your resume is bullshit. Like, I don't care. It's just a paper. It can be real or not sure. It, it's, it's, it's flat. It's one flat thing. And so we were using videos and very direct questions and quizzes like, uh, what's your skill? Tell me, tell me what you think about your skill. Is it this skill? This, this, this. Sure. Now, could you explain? Uh, could you answer this couple of simple questions on video? And you know what? It was crazy. It was. It was amazing. You know, you and, and other people right now are watching this video. Think you're looking at the, your candidate's video this way. You, it, it's unimaginable how many informations you get from people talking to you. Absolutely. And then I want to pick up on this because so, because you said that your resume doesn't matter and I truly agree it doesn't because uh, my background is in, you know, sales consulting as well. So I met dozens of uh, sales directors with 10, 15 years of experience. And, 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 and currently it means nothing, you know, it's just, it's just years that people spend working for some, for, for companies. It doesn't really tell you how effective they were. It doesn't really tell you, you know, what kind of problems they were. It doesn't tell you anything. You know, this is just a number five, 10, seven, 12 years, 15 years of experience. All so you're gonna you're gonna sell three times more because you have three times more lives, yeah, like, 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 like that, years of like experience, that matters right? At all, right? That you have 15 yeah. years of experience, and now you're gonna sell um, three times more than the person that has five years of experience. I, I don't, I do not agree. agree. Let's pay you three times more. That's I do great. not agree, and and unfortunately, this is true. Unfortunately, most companies. I think your product was great, but the adoption time. That, that is required for people to start thinking differently is just it's, it's too much time i think i think this 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 product would be is great and will be great uh, a couple of years from from now because people are still thinking i, I think it's gonna be back definitely because definitely. Uh, we still think about it I, and it was you know we we had such great use cases for that and there's one pro tip i i tell every single people who are looking for, you know, their employees, people to, to work with them, just add a video of yourself talking about this job. Not about the, you know, perks that are totally bullshit. Just tell what's the salary, what's the, you know, main perk, like the medical That's insurance right. in, in US or any ben any, any crucial benefit. That you yeah, maybe something that stands out from from all the other and other simple video. What's the job? Me explaining the job in in like two minutes, and I get twice the applicants other companies do. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, that, that's a good uh, that's a good advice. But I have more questions. I wanna <laughs> I wanna explore this relationship a little more. Um, with with uh, 
the businesses that that you're setting up and then and then, and then running at some point you're running into this problem that some some you know clients might not be either happy you know or they find some, some other solutions or whatever so the retention of your customers is super crucial for uh, for the cash flow of the um, of the company uh, how do you deal with that or or, or, or you, you don't deal with that, it just happens and they stay because they love you. What's the secret sauce? You know, our dev shop uh, was in this specific situation. I'm not sure if, if, if there was one company that left us as a customer, but we also, we, we you know, it, it was crazy. It still is, we, we, we didn't have a website. And we were a dev shop. Think of it this way: there, there was no active acquisition of customers. Every single customer was was from a referral, or they saw our job at their, you know, competitors. Um, so yeah, I think people leave you because they, they, they sure they they are not getting the service you provide. They cannot. Uh, they don't use it and or they you know don't get along with you and for example in, in startups the churn mostly it's said that uh one company will be with you for for like three years it's about three you know dripping down about three to, to five percent per, per month of, of your of your customer base uh, i think customer support team is is not to let that happen i mean customer support job is not to let that happen because you know sales brings you customers support keeps your customers and quality of your product and when you're in a very you know in a niche when where there are tons of competitors there is a sure you, you can lock your customer up like they they have no idea how to get rid of you and switch to other service or company but the best thing is just to you know do your job well and talk to them I <laughs> it's, That's it's good. vague it sounds stupid no, it's, it's but yeah like, it's, it's but it's it true so much, like uh, people but, forget about it yeah so go ahead because uh, I think I uh, finished. <laughs> no, but it just makes so much sense. But it's not about that statement that you made. It's about how to actually do it. You know, because most companies, uh, most companies are not optimized for you, for what you just said. Most companies are optimized for the revenue. That's why if you are optimized for the revenue, then the revenue is the king, and 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 you don't care so much. Um, you should, but you don't. I mean, I know because I am a customer <laughs> and I know that most companies are not optimized for, for your satisfaction. They optimize for the revenue, which is not, which is not great. Um, yeah, but you have to decide where your, like the, the, the churning point is where, you know, where your customers say goodbye to you. If, if it's about your product, fix the product. If, it, if it's about, you know, your service, man, just send every single customer a, an email once a year or a quarter or a half year with a link. If you want to talk with us, this is, you can, you can book a phone call with me and you can book a video call with me or just tell me, is there something that pisses you off? Makes sense. I just uh, I had a lot of conversations as a consultant, uh, you know, in the past, and there were companies that wanted to increase their sales, you know. But when you look at the product, it was not great. When you look at the pricing, it's super expensive, and and they are still surprised that they cannot sell uh, at that price to certain customers. It's just it's not gonna work, and. And what you say, if they listen to what you say, they would still, they, they still wouldn't understand what you mean. I understand what you mean, but 
There's a lot of people out there that, that, that don't, and it's obvious, it's common sense, and they still don't get it. So now, the most favorite topic of 2023. What do you think that could be? Yes. <laughs> it's AI. <laughs> it's I artificial know. intelligence that, yeah, that is taking over and will, so and, will boring. Be, and will be dead soon. So I want to I wanna, you know, discuss the AI because right? there's, I think the hype is slowly uh, dying. People are still talking about it, but we are looking for the next thing to talk about as humans. So, but, but I still want to, you know, talk about it a little bit, um, about how the AI is, uh, here to replace, you know, salespeople, uh, and, and, and maybe the interactions, maybe even the, the, the customer success or, 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 um, uh, or account management, how, how do you look at it? Do, do you feel that it, the AI is taking over or that, that was just a hype or the hype is gone, but now is actually a time when, when AI will uh, take over. Hmm. You know, the, during every single, you know, industrial revolution and the technological revolution, there will be some jobs that may not, may not be needed as much as they their providers would like to, but I, I don't like the word replacing because for example, if you're doing such a basic job that AI could easily replace you, it's not that big problem for society because it was your basic job and it was probably your first job or like, like the, you know, customer support or on your phone. Every, every job is important, but this job is easily replaceable. But when AI can replace some, I mean, junior software developers, that's a huge help for, for the, for the society. Like you can create more with less. That's a great resource management. True. We're using AI both in, you know, software development, in our product. I think exciting, there, there's going to be exciting, exciting times. Mm. But if we're talking about like replacing, let's, let's, let's use the word replacing for, for now, but maybe it's not replacing, uh, the, the, the human interaction, you know, like the, the, I don't know, the, the, the salespeople. Uh, customer service uh, representatives. How much of their work can be replaced by the AI? Think of the shitty job you would give to your intern. This is, this is AI. If you're doing a, an enterprise sales, and the AI won't replace yeah, yeah. you, but it's, it's but for example, it can prepare you a presentation. It can help you with doing the reports for your uh, prospect. It, it can help you find your perfect new prospect. It can also tell that based on some kind of numbers, your AI assistant would see in the usage of your, you know, customer's account, they would say they are, there is a 60% probability they're, they're not gonna, you know, extend the, uh, the deal we, we have with them, call them. This is AI I need right now, not the AI that, you know, does, re replaces your basic skills, like, you know, writing an email. It's already there. A lot of people are using this, you know, chat GPT just to help me write a good email. Sure. Yeah. Where you really see the AI and, and as a great uh, maybe in more developed is countries, uh, where the labor is getting more expensive, mm -hmm. think of a, a group of robots that can, you know, do, do the construction work. You mean 3d printing homes, right? <laughs> Not 3d printing homes, but you can get the, you know, uh, humanoid robots mm -hmm. working on a construction. Mm -hmm. They are char charging at night. They are not tired. If there's a, you know, risky situation, a robot would do it. Mm -hmm. 
still, it's going to be a market's choice and, and the pricing point for these devices. But because in the beginning, there, there there's going to be uh, a huge margin on these oh, services. Yeah. Working 24-7, <laughs> that's... That's that's good stuff. Uh, every employee would like every employer would like that. Uh, yeah. So uh, I want to get back to the transition that you're going through. Um, transition from um, a service company to a product company. Yeah. What are the learnings there? Because uh, <laughs> I I I kind of understand why you know, the, why you're going in that certain uh, direction, but I, I wanted to know what have you learned in the process? Which model do you pr do you prefer? Uh, just just as a person, as, as, as a person that created several businesses, uh, what, what, what are the takeaways? You know, you're looking at the service company and then you're looking at the product company. What do you, what do you see? Like, what do you prefer and why? Okay, so the service company is quite an instant reward. Like you're getting money for your time, so it's it it your your reward it's instant. When you're doing a product or a startup, you know the odds are winning. You're you're fighting against everything, so it, you've, you you you. I had to create our own foundation so we could work on a startup. What I mean, we we needed a certain level uh, of a recurring revenue that was, you know, flowing from our services, from our SLA uh, deals. Uh, so my team could work uh, on other projects like I1. When you, you know, when we're thinking about software company, it's quite easy, but I will give you a nice, uh, I think it's a good uh, example. Think of, you, you're a music player. When you have a service company, you're playing on weddings. You're, every single wedding, you're, you're playing covers of other bands just to joy people, joy the guests, uh, make, make the bride happy. Uh, but in the end, if you would like to fill a stadium with your own guitar like Ed Sheeran does, you need to create your own mm -hmm. music. So the the best thing is start your start your uh, startup as a side business. Uh, we were trying various methods of uh, you know allocating time for the startup. Like let's don't work on our basic business on Wednesdays. Let's have a one week per quarter only for you know think you know re research for the startup and apparently what was really interesting what 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 brought us this the greatest you know um uh, progress was the hackathons we were going to a hotel or any other cool place that we could you know spend time and live there and we were working like around the clock uh, on one single problem. And so after a couple of days spent on this problem, on this idea, you were getting back to your office. And so you had to clean all the mess you, you, you created. And after that, it, it was like, I would compare the, the speed of development was like, I don't know, three, four times faster than we would do in the normal office hours because you were in an extremely hurry, so you would forget about all the unnecessary stuff. You, you, were pro, pro, you, you, you will prioritize your speed over everything else. And that's great because you're making only the hard decisions. Only the necessary decisions, or only the decisions that provide you with the highest ROI. It makes perfect sense to to do it this yeah way. and you know I, I know it it it's it comes it's more uh more, more uh, like a tip or or how we do it information for for startups but when you think about any other company think of think this way 
probably most of my customers are a minor group. Uh -huh. Like the Pareto uh, ratio, right? It's not bad to say goodbye to some of your customers. It's even necessarily to say goodbye to some of them because if you if you yeah, but most people don't get yeah. it. They try to please everybody. Yeah. Think of it. Think of it this way: if you are trying to please everybody, you are pissed off. No, you can never do it. Please everybody. That's number off. one. You can never do it. And then if you look at the portfolio, it's very hard. Like. I kind of understand customer success and there's this this rule of customer success that, that you look at the customers and you look at the you know amount of time they consume, the amount of revenue. And very often the biggest customers uh, are the customers that provide the lowest you know ROI. Uh, they, 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 they are the volume is huge, but you're not making any money there because the bigger they get, the more discounts they want, the more problems they generate. So, Absolutely, absolutely agree with um, with what you said. Um, uh, you know, I remember from the book uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel uh -huh. and and Blake, whatever. Uh, they said like when you're when there's a hyper growth, you you can just you know have a stream of customers uh, <laughs> running away from you, it, and it's fine because you're still growing super fast. Right, right. If you have if you have two customers and your total market is ten customers in your country, then you cannot do it. Sure, I have I, I have uh, now I have a question, a fun question. Um, sure. Does the name David Lynch triggers anything in your mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it? So yeah, there was it. so. Uh, I used to be a singer in a metal band S and I don't know how, but finally I landed, uh, um, uh, in a film school um. and, uh, I was true, you know, I was a student for, to, to be an uh -huh. actor, which never happened. So, and because I, I had quite good English skills then, so the Dean, uh, she asked me to help them help help the school translate Is one it? guy. So I, you know, I got into the car, went went with them, and I was translating some guy talking about something about cinema and plants and whatever. So and after we finished, uh, you know, my friend said, "And how was this guy? How was he? Is he cool? You spend you know hours Is with it? him." I said, "What guy? Which guy?" And they said, you know, the guy you were translating, it's him. I said, is he, you know, some somebody special, crazily yeah. famous? And they said, man, it's David Lynch, guy f who who directed this Twin Peaks. I opened my phone. I waited like thirty seconds to load the picture of the guy. Ah, yes, my guy. So yeah, that, that's so my had, story with so this guy. So you had no idea at the time? No. No idea who the David was? No, you know, uh, I got into the film school by accident. No, no I, I, I thought I'd be, I wouldn't know how he looks like anyways. But I mean, I, I I know the name, but I, especially that meeting that in per, meeting him in person, it's just, it's not, it's not real. <laughs> so even if, if I was to, to do it, I wouldn't probably Think of about it. this, this, uh, Think this way. I just wanted to get free singing lessons. And my friend said, if you're going to be in a film school, you're going to get free singing mm -hmm. lessons so, and so, music lessons and, and the rhythm yeah. lessons. What's not to like? The, okay. So how did that experience influence you? How did that change you? Like, was it then a inspiration that that followed this meeting after you realized who you met and and, and everything? What, what was the impact of, of of that time you spent with David? Actually, there was none. <laughs> like Come on, just give there us, was just, none. Just give us something. Just give us something. People people want to believe that this was a, a life changing experience. Come on, give us something. 
nothing they want me like it was a funny situation like they they haven't <laughs> right nothing sorry for you know yeah. <laughs> destroying your interview about that <laughs> yeah we, they, 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 there, there must be something i don't know you 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 woke I'll up give you another for, example. for a month and a half and, and you run and, and I, I know, I'm just kidding. I, I know. But. No, no, no. Actually, there, there there was like nothing. And I'll give you my perspective from the mm -hmm. other side. I spent like 200 hours designing the, job. Uh, the shape yeah. of this device. This is what I, this is what I'm built of. Okay. This is your passion. Not translating yeah. for, for David. That's fine. Um, he was a cool guy then really I, I love how people from uh, sure speaking English as a native yeah. language and especially people from US and especially people from US experience in, in communications how they you know talk about things for example they can tell you oh this is it i think that it's, it's x and y and z and you and you say yeah it's brilliant yeah because it's simple it's simple it's understandable that's that's how it works that's how their marketing works you know so it's it's, uh, it's yeah it's it's, it's 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 true think of think of about this uh, thing this way thousand songs in your pocket yes <laughs> nobody in europe would think of that um, yeah, because it's, it's, simple. it's super simple. Yeah, it's so simple. So now I have to uh, interview David and, and figure it out how meeting you influenced his life. We'll see. Maybe there's going to be something there. Not sure if he can remember, but yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. He's on my list. We'll see. Um, and then you, your philosophy is, is kind of being close to clients, right? Understanding them yeah. and users, clients, users, kind of. Kind of same thing. Yep. Uh, do you think that the current state of, of, of business, the current landscape is, is, is being influenced by the approach that you believe in or the, the most companies do not understand it and, and it's still just something that only few companies, or not few, but just a couple of percent of companies. No, I think it's a very popular idea. Talk to your customers. If you have, you know, sometimes, some time to spare, talk to your customers. They're going to really tell you a lot of about your product, their, their needs, what they think. You, you will even, you know, uh, get information about your competition. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's when, you start, when you start talking to your customers, it's really hard to stop. And it's not only about customers. It's like... I love that those stories, uh, for example, when Bob Iger from Disney, he said uh, like every executive in Disney, they have to spend a day in the, in the, you know, the, in their amusement park being dressed like a Mickey or whatever. Guy, it's great. It's so, first, it's fun. Second thing, you're learning, you know, the, the foundation of your business. And you're talking to your customers. You're you're not disconnected from your customer base. Yeah. So I was I was going to ask about the one advice that that you would give to business people that are looking to like deeper the connections uh, with clients uh, and users. And I think you just you just described it. And you yeah. Just, kind you of. just answered my <laughs> my future question. Um, so yeah. Uh, now. I think I want to ask you about one topic that that you want to discuss. That's one topic that we didn't have a chance to talk, you know, during this this conversation. One thing, th this is your choice. We can talk about anything that you want, uh, if you want to. <laughs> That's I know hard. this is because this is an interview, and and and, and now this question kind of requires you to to like come up with a topic. Uh, so uh, this is just a question that I sometimes ask, like, you know, we, we go through, you know, different questions. Usually we go with the flow, you know, just, I'm just asking questions that are relevant, but they helping me and the audience to understand 
your motivation and, and, and your business and you as a person. But sometimes there is, there is that one thing that, that didn't come out, that one thing that I didn't yeah. ask about and, 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 and you think it would be interesting to talk about. But maybe I did cover I, it all. I'm, I don't think I'm this kind of person because it's, it's you know, turning into a first. Um, no, I mean, I don't like this <laughs> idea. I, and and I, I'll tell you why. Because most people, they'd like to talk about yeah. themselves and their business. And they are pitching all the time or, you know, trying to sell something all the time. And it's boring and what 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 is so much harder is, is, is listening to people are saying and this is what i really encourage you i mean everybody of you to just you know pick the phone or write a single line email to your customer hey i'm go I, i'd like to talk about you know maybe not your business but uh i'd like to catch up for you for 10 minutes uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the, this is the same thing that, that I keep talking about. And this is my one advice that I give to every, everybody. And I say, there's just one KPI that you should, that you should follow. And it's FaceTime with your client. It doesn't matter how you do it. Could be a call, could be a, a in-person meeting, you know, could be a video that you kind of, you know, put out there uh a phone conversation anything but just make sure that that you stay in touch uh with your client and this is just one kpi if you follow this one kpi you will have a successful business and and then you'll be able to identify what they need what they like what they don't like what they are willing to pay for what they don't want to pay for just just it's all out there but most most uh companies they just follow certain trends uh, they provide, but they are very terrible at collecting feedback uh, from their customers. And I think that is this, is this uh, the end of the conversation? <laughs> because you, you sound like a, and you can all do it with I one. Oh, that that is that no, is, I, um, that is, it was that a is product job. placement. But I know, you know, the 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 guy running this uh, this digital executives hub, so we can do it. You know, guys, we're not here for promoting. No, I, want, I, I was, because I I was really here like the... for getting to know you. And then I really, truly believe that there are so many incredible people out there. People that, you know, are living their lives, you know, to create services, products that, that, that are making this place a better, that are making this world a better place. Most of them, there are there are anonymous. Most of them, uh, they they don't get you know enough attention or they don't get the attention, and they are fascinating people. And for some reason, like the majority of, of viewers and, and listeners, they they like to know more about Brad Pitt. They like to know more about whatever, uh, which uh, which something which is something I don't I don't really want because those people that are like super famous or something, just a few of them, they are there for very many different reasons. Uh, and I'm really interested in, in people that are actually doing the work, but they just not, no, nobody knows what they do. And then this is like the kind of the part of, of digital executives have, because I really truly enjoy those conversations, uh, with humans, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, you had a couple of great conversations because I checked your channel and, you know, there were great insights from me. They good, they different. Some of them, they're more technical, some of them. But I, I think, I think by this conversation, but the conversation that we're having right now, I, I think that I, I, I want to talk more about, you know, humans than, 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 than technology. The technology is always going to be there because the technology is shaping uh, the world we live in. But getting to know people, I think, I think this is some, this is something that we need more of to get to know the people, uh, not just, you know, customers, users, but, but the people that we are surrounded with. So 
I think that's a good takeaway. Of course, it's all powered by I one. Absolutely. No, but forget <laughs> about the I one. I don't want to hear the I'm name again. I'm not forgetting the this. name that is on your chest. Absolutely not. Uh, this is actually the sponsor of this episode. <laughs> You know what's what's you know what's funny? Most people think I I wear these uh, hoodies on special occasions. <laughs> I have like thirty of them, and half of them are you know in this gray this color, because I I love the single you know mono uniform. Okay, so so you it was not you know product placement. It was something that you just enjoy and like. No, only on weddings I, I change it to shirt and. I hope I hope the viewers. Are- when you see me a diff- in a different clothes, it means I'm going to a wedding. some official occasion. Official occasion. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful. Uh, thank you for, you know, having this uh, human to human conversation at, as it was great. I had fun, first of all. That's how I rate uh, the, the this uh, uh, interviews, you know. What's the fun rating of this, uh, uh, no, of this I interview? I cannot say because then people are gonna, other people are going to ask me and some people are going to feel bad. I cannot. I cannot say. I had fun. That would be good. I, I think that that's a that's a great idea for you know for an interviewer to rate people in the end. Like your skill is two out of five. Your fun no, level no, is four no, out of five. No, some some people would not <laughs> like that. But but also uh, this is kind of my job, so you feel comfortable enough. Oh, that would be my question. How did you feel? It was great. It was really great, and I, I I really like your approach. And you know, I, I think that the, the previous guests you had were were very, they had very valuable information. They they provided so much valuable stuff. If you pay attention, if you listen, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's not for everyone. You know, like like this conversation is not also not for everyone. But. Nothing is for everyone. It's more for everyone than the than the data uh, podcast that we had. I, I I don't think I don't think it's for for everyone. It's for a lot of people, but 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 still, those people have to be curious. You know, it's not some some gossip that you know that are like there's it's not it's not you know cooking channel or something. <laughs> this is actually real stuff that you can implement in your life. And that's why. Yeah, but there be, there may be you know a one single uh, thirty second part of this video, like a you know reel you're gonna put on YouTube, where where one founder or one you know salesperson will say, "Shit, okay, I'm not alone." Yeah, I, I think you know when you're making people feel inspired. That's the biggest takeaway you can have. I will I will drink to that and, and this this should be the takeaway because if you get them inspired. So it's keep the them final takeaway of the takeaway section of the Yeah, we had like interview. ten minutes of takeaways, you know. That was the that was the longest I, I the, the that was the longest time I spent like summarizing and saying goodbye and having fun in the same time. So do you go for Maciej or do you go for Mike? What, what do you I'm, what do you do? She, my my name is Maciej. Uh-huh. It's it's Polish uh-huh. name. And m- m- but my problem is when I'm outside of outside of Poland, apparently I become Maciej, <laughs> Maciej, Maciej, Magic, yeah. Maki, Ma- Maciej. And up. I don't care. I just want to be Mac. Because I, for example, when they are calling me, I know it's about me. And and, and so and it, I like me that computer. So it's what I was going to say because you love iOS uh, and 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 Apple. I hated and that's it. Why you Actually, Mac? I get it. Makes perfect sense. So Mac, I really appreciate it uh, that we had this conversation. I had fun. You had fun. It was kind of inspirational. I think we nailed it. So. Thank you, and uh, maybe we'll see each other, you know, again in, in, in some other episode sometimes in the future. So, thank you. Thanks and can wait. Thank you thank again. You.